talking about overhead. Talking about under or over applied overhead. Applying overhead is increased term and rate. Talking about applying overhead amongst multiple products. Well, today we're going to get into a little bit of a discussion of absorption costing versus variable costing. Uh, how this relates? Well, what we were doing with overhead, we were applying it so we could get uh, an understanding of what the cost of the product was. So the cost of the product was direct material plus direct labor plus the overhead. That's following generally accepted rules to follow through the so we cost of goods sold. That's called full absorption costing. Absorbing all the manufacturing costs into the product cost. So when we follow gap rules, and what we have to report on the financial accounting statement is the cost of goods sold, direct material, direct labor, manufacturing, overhead. The problem is this is both fixed and variable, or mixed cost with fixed and variable components. So let's say, let's just focus on one cost. Let's say we have $100,000 factory rent. Under full absorption costing, we would put it into work in process, or we would apply it as we would apply it as part of our estimate. Estimate eventually it falls through, we close any differences, and goes to cost of goods sold when the goods are sold. So if we produce And sell 20,000 units. Well, if we produce and sell 20,000 units, it means all the costs will have been flowing through and go to cost of goods sold. So, uh, cost of goods sold equal 100,000. Cost of goods sold per unit, 20,000 units, $100,000 in cost would be $5 each. <coughs> and it's all perfectly fine. We have no problem here of when we're making and selling exactly 20,000 units. But what happens if we produce 40,000 units but sell 20,000 units? Then what's going to happen? So our finished goods, we would have the hundred thousand dollars in there for forty thousand units. So when we were figuring what cost of goods sold would be, hundred thousand divided by the forty thousand units would equal two fifty per unit. Cost of goods sold. When we sold twenty thousand units. Cost of 250 each. <laughs> Recognize 50,000 cost of goods sold. So when we produce and sell exactly 20,000 units, we produce exactly the same as what we sell, our cost of goods sold was 100,000. Well, we sold the exact same amount of units. 20,000, but now we're producing 40,000 units. Well, what's happening now? Cost of goods sold is $50,000. Well, what's happening is this additional, the other 50,000 dollars. Well, that's going to be put on the balance sheet. as inventory for the finished goods, these 20,000 that we didn't sell. Well, what's going to happen then? We go and figure out our profit. Let's say we sell these things for $8 each. 
So when we sell 20,000, so when we produce and sell 20,000 units, our cost was 100. So our gross profit was 60. But now, if we produce 40,000 units, our gross profit is 110. So if we reward managers based on gross profit, we'd say, wow, you did a good job. You raised gross profit by 50,000. But sales didn't go up, and actual cost didn't change. All that's happening is, is this whole thing with fixed cost. In total, they stay constant no matter what our production is. But per unit, as we produce more, The cost is spread out over more units. So under full absorption costing, following gap rules to come up cost of goods sold, we can manipulate the gross profit here by hiding fixed costs on the balance sheet. Well, what's eventually going to happen? Well, either we're not going to be able to sell these 20,000 units, our product may become obsolete, there's going to be competition and that sort of thing. But we have to store them too. We are, you know, it may come out next <laughs> period where we realize, oh, well, we have this overrun of product, and then we produce fewer, well, then our costs go up. Our costs <coughs> so will go up next period. So, yes, it's an immediate bump, and we don't want this happening. So internally, full absorption costing isn't really good for us. It's going to, you know, we're trying to make decisions here. Well. The decision based on full source and costing would be to produce more than we need. And we don't want managers making that decision. So internally, we're going to separate out variable and fixed costs. We're going to look at variable costing. Variable costing will take the variable manufacturing costs, which is typically direct material and direct labor. They're variable. They go up as production goes up. They go down as production goes down. And then the variable manufacturing overhead. We're also going to look at the other things that Catholic County ignores. We're also going to put in with that the variable S and A costs. Those actually do play a role in going up as we sell more. And we need to take those into consideration for internal decisions. So what happens? 